we are live now. Good yes. uh, evening for my mighty Australia and good morning for all our probably UK friends and maybe good afternoon for everybody else. Uh, welcome to the Godox Lighting Talk. And today I'm, I'm just so, so excited to have Paulina um, to be our speaker. So she's, uh, um, she's a portrait photographer and or family photographer based in UK. I, I've been following her. I've been internet stalker her for so many years. I love her fine arts work. And um, yeah, I know that she's a SWPP overall winner and the multiple times WPPI first place winner. It's like the first place and gold awards just drop out her pockets like, I don't know, <laughs> like coins. And uh, I, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Uh, I love her way, uh, the way she's her fine arts. Um, you know, her. I, I'm always a big fan of her fine arts style. So uh, I think a uh, white image speak more than a thousand words. So that's where she's going to share with you later on. Uh, instead of further ado, let's can we? I will just hand it over to you, Paulina, and let you to start your talk. Yes. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Where, wherever you are. Thank you so much for having me. It's a big honor and a pleasure. And I hope you're going to enjoy the time with me and uh, Godex, obviously, today. So uh, what is meeting all about? OK, I will try to explain to you how to create the perfect image that your clients are going to love. OK, and obviously I'm going to be talking about my photography, how I do that, OK, because it's impossible to speak for all the photographers around the world. OK, so um, let me explain you a bit about my photography. I am a family and children photographer based in UK and I specialize in painterly style of uh, portraits for family and children. Um, I have been doing it that for about six years, but I established fully my style about four, three years ago. Okay, so um, to tell you how to create the perfect image for your clients, I think the most important factor is everything depends on you. You have to establish your style and your message to clients as a first, and then if they're gonna like it, they're gonna follow you and they're gonna need you and want you, okay? So I'm gonna share the uh, presentation with you where I can go step by step maybe and talk a bit more about the style of mine and uh, what kind of light I use, obviously mentioning Godox <laughs> because this is my favorite light. And I'm gonna talk about a composition. I'm gonna talk about what kind of clothing to use, what kind of fabric, and also how I do consultation with my clients because I think this is a very major um, fact to be uh, to be done. Okay, so let me share the screen. Is that okay? Yeah? Go ahead. Guys, if you have any question, leave that in comments. We will address it one by one uh, by the end of the talk. The talk is going to, we're going to spend about 15 minutes on the talk and we will answer all your questions. So stay tuned. Okay. Oh, well done. Okay, so I think I need to make it smaller. Is that visible yeah. enough? That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So idea, what do you want to showcase, guys? Okay, this is what I've been talking about. And it's all about consistency. Okay, when you're going to realize what kind of photographer you want to be, you're going to send a specific message to your clients and straight away your clientele is going to be obviously divided people who are going to love you they're going to book you people who are not going to be able to fall in love with you because obviously that's that's normal situation or you know they're not going to be understand be able to understand your photography or you're just not going to be their cup of tea they're going to go to different photographer and that's absolutely okay the reason the main thing is to send a correct message to your clients. So I decided to be specific fine art painterly photographer about four years ago. And the only genres I was 
uh, focusing on was family and children. And to be honest, my business exploded very fast because I was able to target a very specific um, niche of clientele, okay? And people who like this style and are gonna see my work, they're gonna, they're gonna make a decision in, instantly that I am photographer for them. But if you're gonna have a family who wish to have a um, outdoor lifestyle photography or maybe lighter lifestyle, boho style in some kind of different studio, they're gonna see straight away that I am not photographer for them. So this is a very important key, okay? How to create the perfect portrait for your clients. First of all, target them correctly, okay? When you're gonna target them and they're gonna love you and they're gonna book you, you already win, okay? You're already gonna produce the photography they're gonna love because they specifically book you because they love you, okay? So it's like both situations, the both sides are very happy, okay? You are happy because you're produ producing what you love and your clients are happy because they know they're gonna get photography that they're gonna love. Okay, so yeah, don't worry about being a photographer for everybody. Don't worry about being able to say no to people who are just not your clients, okay? Be brave and uh, choose the style and colors and everything you love and create with your passion. And trust me, you're gonna find your tribe, people who are gonna love you, okay? The next important message, from me is that to be able to create a powerful image, you need to create the image with the impact, okay? And impact is all about those little things you can see now on the screen, okay? So I kind of uh, had a quick chat about consistency that is included in this idea, the first one. Then it's all about the styling and correct choice of accessories. Obviously lighting, one of the most important things, composition within your image, the connection with your viewer, the mood and atmosphere that you want to showcase on your images, uh, the correct posing, the colors that you're gonna choose, and the very, 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 at the very end, you've got the final retouch, okay? And I'm gonna explain why is it at the very end in just a second. So styling, fabrics and the color palette. So your clients love your images, okay? They love your style and they book you, okay? Now you need to make um, consultation with them, schedule the time so you can discuss what kind of images they exactly want you to create, okay? You know you're safe because they love you already, but if they wanna go towards a specific tone of the images, if they want to choose the specific style of clothing, okay? You need to ask them those questions because that's gonna determine the whole session. It's very important. Some of my clients, they wanna go towards pale pink, um, ivory tone of images. Some of them prefer very moody, dark, either blue, gray, or brown, or you know, even black and white tones, okay? So it's my job to determine it during the consultation so the session is much easier, okay? So yeah, as you can see, my style is very cohesive. It's, it, it doesn't matter really what kind of color I'm gonna choose unless it's very vibrant or the, everything is very um, close together, okay? So like this blue, gray tones, the clothes I'm using, they are not normal clothes, they are not everyday clothes because I want my clients to feel special. And this is this is who I am, okay? I want them to dress in a beautiful clothes, in a evening gowns. I want them to feel that they are doing something unusual that is not every day of their life. They are doing, they investing in a special moment. Okay, so this is who I am, obviously. So choosing the right styling, choosing the right fabrics and the color palette is very important for them and for you. Next, accessories. We need to remember that they are to complement, not to overpower your clients. And I so many times that photographers, they don't really care about what kind of accessories they use. They just throw whatever on the image and they think it's gonna work. Obviously, there is a difference between the fashion photography, uh, product photography, 
in the portrait photography, okay? When you are a fashion photographer or a product photographer, the person is uh, a backstage. This is like a secondary product, okay? The most important is the stuff that you want to sell or, you know, showcase. I am a portrait photographer. I photograph real families and people. So for me, the most important is to showcase them as a person, not the product. This is like a secondary thing. So whatever I'm going to choose to add to the image, I need to make sure it's just a it's just a compliment. It's just a little add, okay? It's going to give something, but it's not going to overpower this person, okay? And I kind of like um, chose those three images over here. Uh, you can see the girl on the right, okay? She's holding a very common flower that usually grows in our garden, okay? But I chose it because of the texture and the volume uh, that you can see. And that complements her hair. Her hair is all about the volume and the texture, okay? So maybe I can like uh, slightly uh, bring it closer, uh, even maybe. Ah, so as you can see, the texture and the volume looks pretty much the same as the texture and the volume of the hair. And when I posed her fingers, I kind of wanted to show the stripes on the dress. So the stripes you can see over here are exactly as the fingers and the fingers is holding the flower and the flower complements the hair. So the whole image is a, you know, full piece. It wasn't an accident I chose this flower, okay? And um, these flowers, again, I chose because of the color palette. I wanted the browns over here, the dry flowers to match the hair, the pink and purple to match the dress. So everything and the look that is very timeless on the face was to like complement this dry, timeless flowers. Although they are dry, they are there forever, okay? They are not gonna be they're not gonna die anymore because they're already dead, but it's just a timeless flower, okay? I love dry flowers. They've got something very unique in them. And then you've got people who don't really need anything. Okay, Farouk, I'm sure many of you saw him in TV or at newspapers. He is a very unique boy because of having this amazing hair. And the hair is accessory itself, okay? He doesn't need anything else. So make sure that you know what you are adding to those images, because sometimes if you're gonna choose it in a wrong way, it can break the image rather than build it up, okay? The size of the chair, it cannot be too small, it cannot be too big. If you're gonna use sofa, yeah, make sure that it's gonna fit within, you know, the size of, uh, the size of a people, color palette, it needs to work together. So, and also ask your clients if they want to include anything because some of the parents some of the clients they don't want anything they just want a simplicity on the images a beautiful portrait of the children and that's it so make sure you ask this question during your consultation light <laughs> light is the most important thing well kind of on the on the same level with the consistency i think um within the photography okay and and we know that we we as a photographers it's our job to be able to create the perfect lighting, okay? And um, to be honest, I kind of was learning lighting by myself through the trial and, you know, experimenting. And obviously I was reading a lot. I was watching YouTube and other photographers. And <clears throat> then I realized I like the most two set of lighting I would say to setups okay one of them is the butterfly light and the other one is the Rembrandt light and to be honest Rembrandt is by far my favorite because I love how the shadow and light play on the faces of my clients and um, I am a very simple photographer I use only one light in terms of the stroke sometimes you can see two lights on my images especially in my recent work but it's not the strobe I'm adding to the image is because I discovered in my studio, I can accommodate my window lighting and use it as my secondary light, okay? So I still am as a, like a one light photographer using one strobe and then I gently add this beautiful soft window light 
from my light, okay, in my studio, but probably I will not be able to use it anywhere else. It's just my studio is very unique. So <clears throat> let me talk about this butterfly light and the Rembrandt light, because I think it's quite important for you guys. Um, I put here behind the scene and the final image so you can, you, you can see how I set up the lighting and how actually it, it, it's shown on the final image, okay? So this butterfly light is the light that is positioned at the front of your clients, of your models, okay? It's not the most um, flexible light. It's pretty much you can stand only one place, but it's beautiful because it gives you this amazing symmetrical shadow and light on the face, okay? Because you position the light in a way that the catch lights are on the top of the eye, you can see the symmetrical shadows under the cheekbones, under the nose, and under the lips, okay? This is the only way when you can create the symmetry. And this is the light that is mainly used by the fashion photographers. Uh, they, usually, they usually use the beauty dish. I use a massive Godot softbox. I think it's 165W. Uh, it's because it produces amazing soft light. And that's what is very important in my painterly fine art. I cannot have a sharp um, images with a very strong and sharp shadows and a very high highlights. I need to have a very soft shadows and a quite dark highlight and open my aperture pretty much to the maximum, like 2.2, 2.8, 3.2, the, the highest. Okay, so this is the way kind of to achieve this style if you think how to do it. You cannot go for the f-stop eight. That's not gonna be able to produce the softness on the image, okay? So Godox is allowing me to go to the minimum um, intensity of the light. I literally have it on a minimum. So it's like a dim light even coming, okay? And then open your aperture and you will be able to create the softness straight away on your raw, raw images. So this is kind of the butterfly lighting and you can see I separate my model with the V-flats from the window light, okay? To be able like, just to separate it so it's not gonna be too much lighting um, over there. The next light I use, and this is def, oh, sorry, jumped. Definitely my favorite one is a Rembrandt lighting. Why is it my favorite? Favorite? I've already mentioned that. Um, obviously, it's because of the light and the shadow. That it's it's visible on the face, but most of all, is because it's giving me the freedom of movement. Okay, the butterfly light is the light that you put in the front, and that's it. You cannot really move. With the Rembrandt light, you position your light either to the left or to the right. As you can see here on this image, I've got it on the left side away from my clients it doesn't disturb me or clients anyway during the session i can have my favorite lens 105 millimeters okay and i can move back forward i can do full body i can do crop i can go to them i can adjust the clothing i can communicate with them so this is why i choose this slide as the most favorite one okay because it's literally as soon as you're gonna position it in the right place and the height, you can forget about it for the whole session. It's just there for you. And you can focus on your client and uh, create a beautiful gallery for them, okay? And what this lighting does, if you go, well, obviously it depends if you're gonna position it on the left or on the right side, but in here, you can see it, it's on the left side and it creates this beautiful Rembrandt triangle on the opposite side of the cheek, okay? So one side of the face is beautifully lit and the other side of the face, it's got this triangle where the shadows actually like meet together from be below the nose and below um, and, and on top of the cheek, okay? These shadows, they need to click together to be able to create this beautiful Rembrandt triangle. This is the only way to see this perfect Rembrandt lighting, okay? So these are pretty much the only lights, lighting setups I use during my session, this one um, in particular, um, and I can create a full gallery with beautiful images just based on that kind of lighting. Obviously, I don't really do, um, uh, this is the light, as you can see, it's slightly forward and to the left. It's not really, 
very close and 90 degrees okay um a lot of photographers they do 90 degrees i don't remember how to you this word is just I, I lost it now but i don't do 90 degrees i do 45 purely because i've got sometimes five or six people on the session and if i do 90 degrees okay like very to the side i will not going to be able to light each person that is on the set okay so i rather bring it slightly forward to the left or to the right 45 degrees and then i can you can see lit both people in the same way okay right the next thing i want to mention and that is very important for me purely because i've got a huge ocd in terms of the composition uh yeah it's line and composition okay um not many photographers remember that the rule of thirds have been created and exists okay you need to make sure that you create your images with a reason that those people or anything you present of the on those images they've got a purpose of being it's not just like a person is floating randomly on this image you need to be able to see that okay make remember that those those points are very important for our brain and we see it as a first when you look at the image our eyes go to the top and then slowly to the bottom they go to the left and then slowly to the right you're not gonna start see looking at the image from the bottom up it's unnatural okay or from the right to the left again it's unnatural you go left, right, top, bottom. So make sure that you're gonna put those very important points in those places, okay? Don't give too much space on the images unless you really wanna go for the negative space. That's your choice. But if you don't want to do it, leave just a little bit a breathe, you know, like the space around the person, but don't leave too much because too much space, it's, it's emptiness when you can fill it with something very important to show to your viewers, okay? So remember, those lines, they were created for a reason. Obviously, the rules are meant to be broken, but first, follow them, learn them, try to work with them, and then you can break them, okay? Um, the next one, mood and atmosphere. Do you capture a moment or eternity? I think this is a very important message because this is really defining you as a photographer. I really want to capture eternity, a timeless moment within the photography. And this is what kind of photographer I am at the moment. And I was, and hopefully I'm going to be, I'm not a photographer who's going to be photographing a father throwing baby up in the air or the whole family rolling on the floor and laughing. This is just not who I am. And it's absolutely fine to just say it, you know? If you've got the clients who want that, you can, you know, I recommend someone who's gonna capture that for them. Recently, I started showing a little bit more of smile um, images, uh, smiley images on my, um, on my, in my portfolio, on my Instagram. It's purely because I started getting clients or children who are naturally smiley. And if I've got a little cute girl that is three years old and she's smiling naturally, I'm not going to tell her to stop smiling because that might ruin her to the rest of her life. You know, I'm going to capture it because this is who she is. But recently I had a family and a mom requested, I want my boys to be smiling on the images. And I said, I cannot guarantee it. I cannot, because I'm not going to ask those boys to smile. If they're going to be naturally happy and they're going to have this beautiful smile of them, because that's who, I, who they are, it's fine, I'm gonna capture it, but I'm not gonna be forcing an expression or anyone. It, when I've got the clients coming from my door and like, what should I do with my face? How should I do? I'm like, just be, <laughs> just be, and I'm gonna guide you, you know? Like, I'm gonna see what expression is the best. Obviously, if I'm gonna see it's not really working, I'm gonna gently give me a baby smile, a smile with your eyes or something like that. Just relax your face, relax your lips. I'm going to guide them, okay? But don't don't put too much pressure on them and just make sure you, you cannot guarantee the smiles every time. Like me, I, I'm just not that type of photographer, okay? Mood and atmosphere. Do you capture... Oh, that's already been, sorry. Uh, oh, why I cannot move it? Um, I 
I don't know why I cannot move. Hold on, I'm trying to. Um, I will, because I've got another couple of slides and I don't know why I cannot move it. Um, okay, let me just reshare it, okay? And I hope it's gonna. It's gonna be. Yes! Okay, we got it. Okay. Oh. Correct posing, simplicity, but details matter. Okay, is it is it visible? Yeah? Okay. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> A little problems, obviously. So correct posing, simplicity, but details matter. Okay, posing is a huge subject and it's very important for our clients obviously they hire us and they trust us that we will be able to guide them so they can look their best okay and obviously it's our job it's our job to be able to do it how to be able to do the perfect posing okay um i usually say it comes with a couple of different steps first of all we we just have to learn it okay this is important you, you just have to learn it okay it doesn't come straight away like that it, no one is going to be able to you know be born with the perfect posing skills you can be born with the taste of style and that's going to be very helpful but the correct posing comes with learning and practice okay give me a newborn and i'm not going to be able to do anything with the newborn my pictures are going to be horrible because i've got no practice but I've got a couple of best friends who are absolutely amazing newborn photographers and they can create a gallery of 40 images in one and a half hour, but they struggle with families, okay? So you get you you kind of get where, that, where I'm going. So the more you practice, the more, uh, the, the more knowledge you have. How I started, I was started with pinning the images that I liked the most on a Pinterest, creating a, you know hidden boards and just literally memorizing the poses, how the hands are, how the neck is, how the angle of the face, how, how many people, what is exactly the position, okay? Memorize everything. And then when the right client comes through your door, you just take this pose from the little drawer and just put on this client and then shape it like a Play-Doh, okay? That's how, kind of how it works. And obviously not, not all the poses are for the, all the clients. You kind of have to determine uh, who's gonna be relaxed, you know, during what kind of pose. So that's very important. But if you are right photographer and you know guide in a gentle voice and uh, with um, time, don't rush and literally make your clients very comfortable. You can create all sorts of poses during the during the shoot. Just remember. Everything has to be relaxed, okay? The hands, they have to be visible and very relaxed. The poses, they cannot be forced. This is very important. My clients, I want them to look at those images like they are having the time of their life, okay? They are very relaxed. And that, that's very important. That's got very huge, that can create a huge impact um, on the images, okay? And obviously, once I'm here, I'm going to talk a little bit about the colors, okay? Colors are important because that they, they can make you different from other photographers. Some people don't even realize how colors are important. If I'm going to teach 12 people at my class and I'm going to give them the same model, the same clothing, the same styling, they, they're going to have the same camera and they're going to click the same image, the colors and the editing is going to be the only thing that's going to make those images different. Okay, if you're gonna be wanting to be exactly who someone else is, you're not gonna be able to create your own style and be a unique photographer. To be able to be that person, you need to experiment with the colors and try to find your own style, coloristical style, okay? Don't be afraid of showing the colors you love. You don't have to go for the perfect skin tone. There is nothing like perfect skin tone, okay, in our life. We all have different skin tones. So don't aim for perfection. Aim for what you really want to show through your heart, okay? And this is the way to be, to be able to create your unique coloristical style. 
just I wanted to add uh, that little piece. And the last thing, because I think, yeah, we are good on time, I think. <laughs> the last thing is the editing, okay? You need to create the perfect raw image straight in your camera. There is no thing like, oh, I will correct it later in a Photoshop. Don't do that, okay? You've got the time during the session to be able to create a perfect image that your clients are gonna love already in the camera, okay? If you're gonna, all of those elements I've already discussed, if you're gonna be sure that uh, you create what they want through their requirements, okay? So co the, this, the, the correct color style, um, the clothing, the posing, the um, connection with the viewer, the colors, everything that is visible, for example, on this image, you will be able to create this perfect image. OK, my editing, because I know a lot of people think that I spend hours editing my images. That is so sometimes overdone that uh, it's barely not photography anymore. Just to assure you, my images take from seven to ten minutes to edit. OK, they are really not that far from the images that I create in the camera from the, the raw images is just a little bit of skin editing added texture resizing and um, color adjustments in the camera raw filter and dodge and burn and that's it very easy it's because i've got those perfect images already in the camera i do my job during the consultation and during the session then the editing is just a little bit that is left to be able to finish those images for those clients uh, that i hope they're gonna love Okay, so I think that is pretty much what I wanted to share with people who are watching us today. Okay, thank that, you, Camilla. Yeah, okay, yeah. After talk, guys, uh, quite every so often, you know, I, I love how brutally honest uh, Paulina is. Oh, okay. Every so often, people just, yeah, people just tell you, oh, it's the lights, it's amazing lights, or, um, you know, it's the Photoshop, it's the Photoshop, it's it's everything it's about the lighting you know styling the communication the fabric like you say the color if you if you're a straight guy like me who wear everything from uniqlo you would better just got a wardrobe stylist right yeah. uh, it's everything so i love the way Paulina has been break that down for you guys so you, you if you can you know rewatch, so you know that um everything is important it's like a puzzle every piece needs to come all together to to make it beautiful and glow um and if you guys are particularly interested with um uh, with the details of how her styling or how her you know post-production process is um you guys can follow her through the instagram which is her name here and then you can find her websites uh, she does offer some online education tutorial which i believe and you guys can find all the details there and uh so now q a time guys feel free to leave quick all your questions below and we will address them uh one by one cool perfect and uh yeah let's start with this one how did you decide to adopt a painterly style was it a deliberate business decision because you saw market opportunity or did you discover over time you had a talent for doing that specific style wow that is amazing question actually to be honest uh that was completely not business related at all um First of all, I am a photographer artist. Then I am a business person. I'm, to be honest, I'm not a very good business person at all. I just, I just follow my guts and I try to produce what I love. And the business really follows with that. Okay. So uh, at the very beginning, for the first two years of my photography, I started six years ago. Okay. So for the two years at, at the very beginning, I was shooting everything because that's what I was told. I had absolutely zero knowledge in photography. And I was told that this is the only way to run the business. Okay. Just accept all the clients who come through your door, do wedding events, um, fa family, uh, maternity, newborns, lifestyle, everything. And that was making me so unhappy because I could already see that my, um, family and children painterly style has got more um i got more love for that than for other genres and i felt and i felt bad that my newborn photography wasn't as good quality as the family and children painterly style 
And I couldn't do that anymore. I felt like, oh, when I was going to the wedding, I was shutting myself. I felt literally physically sick. I knew that this is not what I want to do. So just one day, literally one day, I told my husband that that's it. Either I'm going to do what I love, and I don't know if it's going to bring us any, mar any money or not, but I have to follow my heart or I'm just going to lose as a photographer. And this is not why I you know, decided to become a photographer. So overnight, I removed everything from my website. I literally left just children, painterly style. I didn't really have that many families over that time that time four years ago and i prayed <laughs> that it's gonna work um couple of people saw my um images from associations and they decided to uh, give me um like support me and they were saying yeah you should take a part in our competitions you could show those images because they are amazing and we haven't seen anything that yet so I kind of, you know, um, decided, okay, I'm going to try to enter a couple of competitions. And that's how people started noticing me, okay? And everything exploded. Before that, six years ago, five years ago, not many people knew about that kind of style. It was very new. Obviously, now it's everywhere. But um, five years ago, it wasn't. So that, was, that wasn't business-related uh, decision at all. I didn't really know if it's going to work or not. But it did. It did because I follow my heart. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's how I knew uh, Paulina because she took all. She almost took away all the family uh, first places in the portrait <laughs> awards in WPPI. I thought, oh, okay. I'm just going to. I'm just going to follow her work, and I uh, I fall in love with her work ever since. So. Thank you. How do you direct their expressions if they aren't professional actors? So yeah, just to just to let you know, my my clients are real people. They really are not actors, models, or anything like that. Um, I um, I when I have my workshops, then yes, maybe I'm gonna ask for a children who've got a little bit of model experience, purely because for me the most important are the students to teach, not, you know, to create a photograph of someone, okay? So I need to have like, children who could cooperate. But my family sessions are just with the normal people. How I direct their expressions, okay, so this is something you've got within, I mean, inside you. You just, I just know uh, which way they should look, how they should angle the face, if they should have a little bit more soft face, or maybe more stronger, or it's very difficult to explain. Is it just, it, it's it's within you, okay? I had a couple of times questions during my workshops, like, but why did you, did you decide to move their face to the right? I'm like, because this is how I felt. It should be done, okay? And to the last moment, I don't know if if that's the right thing. I just follow it because I feel it's right. Okay, and so far my clients love it and they feel comfortable uh, within me. And uh, once, like, if you were my client, <laughs> you would know that my sessions are like completely different to how I am now. Now I'm talking all the time and I'm, you know, like, oh, I've got all this adrenaline and, you know, all of that. But during my session, I'm very calm. I barely speak. I literally just direct with my hands and I give them a time to adjust, okay? So when they are relaxed, they are easier to guide. I hope that can answer your question. Hey, Kit, yeah. um, I think I got, uh, I got a very respected photographer, Peter Adams says, um, your photos is the connection you build between you and your subjects. So yeah. it's, it's, it's part of you as well, if that makes sense. And Anso Adams said, the photos you, you, you took it's the movie you watch, the music you listen to, and the people you loved. So I guess um, it's it's part of you too. Uh, it's a self discovery journey. I I think that's what Paulina's trying to say here. That's beautiful, absolutely. Like I I don't do cake smashes or a very jumpy images because this is not who I am. Yeah. I am yeah. very gentle and soft during the session. So this is how you you see my subjects as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that was perfect explanation. Yeah. 
amazing pictures. When styling models, do you mostly follow their own wishes or do you persuade them to do something entirely different? They initially dislike, but they end up loving when seeing the pictures. Okay, so this is a very good question again. And we go back to what I said at the very beginning of this um, live. Um, my clients already love my styling when they book okay, the session with me. So I don't really have to persuade them to change something, uh, what they love, because they agree to anything that I tell them to do. They've got pure trust within my choice of styling to them. I want them to direct me towards the color tone, okay, because it's about their houses. Some of my clients, they've got very modern houses, so they cannot really have the brown, warm, vintage colors. They would go more for black and white or gray tonality or blue, okay? So that's what is impo important during the consultation. But the styling, they 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 gonna know they're gonna love anything that I'm gonna tell them because they love what I do. Okay. In terms of the clothing, if that's what you're asking as well, I do have a quite large selection in my studio to provide for my clients, mainly for ladies and the girls. Obviously, the guys not so much. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, not I important of bones that they can come and use, and I show them that during the consultation. But if they decide to bring a clothing separately that they, that they want to use for the session, they need to send me the images of each piece they want to bring. So then I can tell them if it's gonna work or not. Because yes, sometimes they choose not right clothing and it's okay to tell them, no, <laughs> you need to bring something else because otherwise the picture is not going to work the way you want it to work because obviously they might not have the same taste as I have, okay? So it's our responsibility as a photographer to gently say, I'm sorry, but maybe we should use that instead of that because that's not really going to work with the dress I got provided for you, okay? Just to give you the example. Great images. Already, they, yeah, I think we've already talked about the lighting. Guys, my, you just have to go, you, all you need to do is just go back to YouTube channel and rewatch it. That's yes. all you need to do. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. How can you guide them as it is difficult for some not knowing how to act in front of the camera? Practice, 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 okay? Uh, just to tell you a little thing, if you're gonna master your lighting, if you know your styling, if you know everything about your photography, your camera, your camera, you know, is very important, then the only thing you need to focus during the session is how to post and direct your clients. That's the yeah. only thing. If you are struggling still with lighting, if you're struggling still with your camera and all these little pieces, and you've got such a, you know, mixture of information in your head, yes, it's very difficult to guide your clients. But I'm at this moment of my time, that's the only thing I focus on. That's why it's easier for me. But it comes with the practice. You cannot think you're gonna shoot one family a month or widen family every two weeks and you will be able to do it perfectly. There was a time I was shooting constantly, day by day, and editing just to be able to practice it as much as possible. <laughs> there is no silly questions. There are always good questions. How many photos do you end up taking of a model during the session, and do you review them with the client while shooting? Okay, so none of the silly question at all, and it all depends on the clients, on the session, on the package they want, on the collection they booked, how they behave. You know, there's there so many different type of sessions, okay? Um, I might have a client who books me specifically just to create five uh, wall arts and I'm gonna shoot for those five. So I will probably create 10 images and then, you know, what I do, what I do, do during the session, and this is very important, I never overshoot. Okay, I'm not that type of photographer who click, 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 click all the time. Mm -mm. I set up the scene, I pose my clients, I tell them I'm gonna do the test light. Okay, so they don't have to do anything. I take one shot, 
and I zoom it in and I analyze if the lighting is correct, okay, then the next shoot, the next shoot is with them posing, I analyze again if there is anything I need to correct, and the third shot is perfect one. If I, I pick up my camera, I look for the viewfinder, and then if I see that there is anything I need to adjust, I put my camera on the side and I go and I adjust and I come back. I don't shoot, 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 okay? That is that that is why I end up with a minimum image amount of the images on my camera, okay? And it will allow me to have a little time with sorting the images after, rather than ended up with 200 images after the session and spending hours trying to sort which images are the best. And this is why my clients trust me because they know I take only a couple of images that they're not gonna ask me the question after, what about all the 100 images that you've taken? Where are they? When I'm gonna present them with the finished gallery. I, they're not gonna ask it, ask it because I'm not taking it. They know I take a limited amount of the images. And when I know I've got the amount of the images they want, I finish the session. I never do more, okay? It, the maximum is 15. And when I'm sure that I've got 15, that's it, I finish the session. I don't do 20 or 25 just in case. No, 15 is maximum, okay? And I show them sometimes um, at the back of the camera, if I know that I've got a really good image, I'm gonna make sure they're gonna see this image at the back of the camera, just to make them so excited, okay? Like, look how you amazingly look now. This is absolutely beautiful. It's gonna look perfect on the wall art, okay? Just to plant the seed in their head already about the wall art. Where do you find your wardrobe? Are they rented? No, they are not rented, and I find it everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. This is like a second job, okay? In terms of the wardrobe, it's very difficult to tell you where I've got my guns because they are literally coming from all the shops all around the world. You need to invest your time and find the wardrobe for your clients that are going to complement your style and they're going to like, okay? It's... It's it's and it's very re rewarding, you know, having a unique clothing collection. So make sure you spend this time and try to find something that it's going to complement you as a photographer. I don't rent, no. I just buy and invest. It's an investment for your studio. Do you have any suggestion for outdoor photo shoot? I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I I am not outdoor photographer. I do have a couple of outdoor images, and they did one couple of awards, but I am not outdoor photographer. I do not feel comfortable outdoor. And I just I just like my studio where it's warm and it never rains and I'm, I'm in control of my light. So there is a plenty yeah. of amazing outdoor photographers who run the workshops and you can ask them the questions. I'm not one of them. Yeah. Mike, uh, check out uh, the um, the previous videos with Kilu as well as Shong Li. They are all out of outdoor photographers. You will find their amazing work there, and they do give a lot of suggestions. So please go go ahead and rewatch their uh, their YouTube talk. Okay. Uh, that's for you. I think that's for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I think the best would be um, get an AKR1, AKR1 kit. I think uh, TT6085 is a square has, you might need an adapter. Um, I don't think uh, TT685 will be, will be ideal to use a softbox with it. Just use a small modifiers. It's probably uh, works better with, uh, with a hot shoe flash, with hot shoe flash. Um, perhaps to use, um, okay. Um, um, yes, I, ha, huh, that's a very nice question actually. And I do love my props and I do love my studio. And to be honest, everything that is in my studio, I can incorporate in my shoots. So it's kind of like all the sofas, armchairs or desks or stools or chairs or ladders or anything I've got, I can incorporate in my sessions. I do not ask my clients to bring any props with them. No, I provide everything and I do like to invest in the props because I think they give a lot of variety into the images. But obviously I can do that because 
I've got a quite large studio and I've got the, you know, the storage room where I can store it. And obviously not everyone is lucky enough to have that kind of space. So I understand it. But even if you've got a, a little space, try to invest like in one ladder or two posing stools that already can give you variety on your images, you know, especially when you've got the family posing. And this flower um, arrangement, um, it's I done myself for my clients for a very special photo shoots. So you can also, you know, create something yourself. Okay, the colors are very interesting. How do you get those brownish tones in camera? That's a very important question. I shoot on the cloudy mode. Okay, so I am a Nikon user. And not necessarily you will be able to achieve it with a Canon or Fuji or Sony, because obviously all cameras are different. But I found out many years ago, about five years ago, that if I uh, put cloudy mode on my Nikon camera, I got those beautiful, warm, kind of orange, yellow tone already. And I haven't, I, I don't change it. If I'm outdoor, if I've got normal lights, I use it on cloudy all the time. And yes, that's why I've got it. I don't use Calvins. I don't use any gray cards. It's just, and also, you know, the, the colors that I add on the images, they've got, uh, they, they've got impact on the color of the image itself, which means if I'm going to choose the brown backdrop and the ivory or brown color clothing, so then it's going to become even more warm yeah you must spend a ton of time on styling do you employ your own stylist no it's just me <laughs> i am a person behind everything in this business i don't have anyone else um so i do style myself um and it's not that time consuming to be honest because my style is very, you know, it's very specific. So um, it's not that different from client to client, okay? Some clients, they've got, the, they want exactly the same images as my previous clients. So I'm just gonna repeat the styling, obviously. You know, they're not, they're never gonna meet each other and see the same wall art in their wall, okay? That's what you present, the, those clients, they, they want it because they see it on social media. So no, it's not that very time consuming at all. And to be honest, I do it with a uh, pleasure. <laughs> uh, makeup and hair. Um, I am a hairstylist as well for my shoots. So um, if, um, if my clients want to use me to create their hairstyle, um, I can do that for them. Uh, so that's my additional. <laughs> skill uh in terms of the makeup i do have a makeup artist that can be um booked for the shoot if the if the session is booked in advance if they um if if she's busy the makeup artist already i always advise to my client uh, for my clients to find someone who is experienced makeup artist and wedding makeup artist okay you don't go just for any makeup artist because they might ruin the makeup rather than help. And I need to have a very specific type of a, the, the wedding makeup artist is uh, uh, the, the wedding makeup is very good because it lasts for a day. They're usually stronger and more visible uh, in the camera. Okay, it's very important to be able to lay the eyeshadows correctly on the eyes that it's going to be nicely done okay the same for like the cheekbones and all of that so wedding makeup is much better than just just the makeup artist okay and they really need to be experienced they really need to know what they're doing if my clients cannot find any experienced makeup artist i advise them to come without a makeup and it's easier for me in the editing to correct the skin than correct it after the wrongly done makeup if you know what i mean oh hey guys so, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah hey guys so i think um you know this whole talk will make a lot more sense if you can follow paulina's instagram and check out her work so you can see the makeup the hair the styling the backdrop the flowers uh, all the pieces will come together uh, as one piece 
So we have it. We have a breakdown today, and you can check out her portfolio too, if you really love her work. And that's the kind of indoor family fine arts. The kind of style is the one you you love or you're going for. It's a great idea to follow her、uh, Instagram, and her Instagram it's right under her her profile name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> What technique do you use for skin editing? How do you decide where to apply dodge and burn in? Okay,、um, I think there's a there is a online video tutorial. I can quickly you, I can quickly、okay. mention it's、yeah. fine. So my、yeah. main、uh, skin editing is frequency separation. Okay, there is like I do all the hand hand editing. I don't use any actions really. So the frequency separation is very important for me, and you can follow the frequency separation even on、uh, YouTube. You know,、um, you just have to really get into it and practice it. Okay, and in terms of the dodge and burning, the best way to know how to do it is to watch makeup tutorials on YouTube. They're gonna be exactly. They're gonna be able to exactly tell you where to apply the shadows, where to apply the highlights based on the makeup. You need to kind of learn where is the jaw lines. Okay, so this is how you're gonna learn the burning, the, the dodging burning technique. Funny story. I spent a two months to study makeup. Well, there before you go. I was yeah, before I did a dodging and burning in right places. Yeah, this is and, what,、um, the best、yeah. advice we we can really give. Yeah. If you want to save some time and see, you know, there's always a different way. You know, with the same tool, there's always different way of how heavy you should apply it.、Um, Paulina, I, to my memory, I think you have a video tutorial on your website.、Right? I do. Yeah, there are yeah. very there there are a couple of tutorials on my website,、um, yeah. different pictures, so you can just go go there and check. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. How do you get those beautiful backdrops? Is it custom made? So、uh, I do have a, two different types of backdrops. One is the hand painted canvases, and the other are the、uh, printed fabrics. Okay, the printed fabrics are from Baby Dream backdrops. They are based in California, United States. Baby Dream backdrops. They've got a huge selection, different products. So just go over there and check. Okay, and my hand painted canvases are from.、Um, One woman business based in Poland. She's called Plichta Photography. If you're gonna go on my Instagram, I I tag her many times on my images. You, you can just go. But just bear in mind, she's just one woman business, and <laughs> it's impossible pretty much to order anything now from her because it takes so much time to to paint. And also, you know, with the taxes and everything. So try to find someone in your own country who can hand paint the canvases. You can try to do it yourself. I don't. Do it myself because I don't have a time. But you can try to paint something yourself.、Uh, printing choices. Okay. Oh, more you more than welcome, Michael. I hope you know you enjoy this、uh, this time with us here.、Uh, printing choices. Okay. First of all, it's very important to choose the perfect lab. Okay, you need to be able to choose the lab that is gonna present your images in the most beautiful way. That is gonna be fast, and the customer service is gonna be on point. Okay, then if you're gonna choose the correct lab, they're gonna be able to help you to choose the right printing for you. When I chose my lab, and this is a DigiLab in、um, Digital Lab in in UK,、uh, what they did, I sent them three. Or even four different images of different color tones, together with black and white, brownish, green, and I think very light one. And they sent me over thirty different printing options. Okay, on the paper, and I just laid them on the floor of my studio, and I was walking between them, and I was choosing which is the right paper for me. And I chose only two, two, two. You know, paper options that complement my style because you cannot really give to your clients too many options because otherwise they're not going to choose anything. You really need to be very specific, like you know, with the kid. If you give them the options, do you want to wear the red skirt or do you want to wear red, the blue skirt? Okay, and that's the only thing. The same with the clients. You give them a limited option, so you have to choose the best options for yourself. So this is print the printing. The the paper is the fine art cotton rag paper. And、uh, the wall arts I like the most. They are fine art nat naturals, which is the fine art paper that is laminated and framed. 
The other one is the um, acrylic uh, satin, which is non-reflective and not gloss, okay, framed as well. And then they are just prints with the art glass and frames. This is the only options I give to my clients. Okay, oh, that's a very interesting question. Right, at the moment, I'm using the most AD300 Pro, okay? This is the light that Godox um, recommended to me from the very beginning, and how did it happen? I literally wrote the email to them, and I said, this is exactly what I need for my photography. That's the effect I want to achieve, and they were able to literally point me to the best lighting for my images. So I think it's very important to just send them an email and say, you know, this is what I need. What would you like to, what, what can you recommend for me? Okay, I'm, they, their customer service is incredible, so I'm sure they will be able to help you with that. Um, oh, I think I will answer that question. Thank you. Because uh, uh, my guess will be TD350 is a 30, it's a 30 watt light. Um, which is hot shoot flash, uh, mainly designed for run and gun kind of style of shoots. For for example, hot uh, on camera flash for events, uh, for journalists or reporters or for wedding photographers. If you want a, a softbox to work with a ninety centimeter softbox, uh, you probably need um, a bigger strobe, such as what Polina has, uh, which is three hundred watts, which is eighty three hundred pro. So I would I would advise you to uh, look into the lights like a strobe type, which is 8300 Pro, 8400 Pro, 8600 Pro, 8200 Pro. Um, that will be uh, more you know bigger strobe with more power will be more uh, suitable to work with the bigger softboxes. So basically. Um, 8400 is a 400, they're both 400 watts. Uh, 8400 has a better performance and it's battery powered. SK is uh, operated by cable. So it depends on your budget, Mike. If you have a more budget and you do a bit outdoor photography as well, and you want to avoid all the hassle because you know if you shoot family or kids, the kids might be tripped by the cable and all of a sudden you have to use your intent you know, in Timothy, in, you have to use your insurance, basically. If you want to avoid those trouble by investing a bit more, the 8400 Pro is the way to go. If you want to save your budget and you just create some, you know, personal project and stuff like those, or you want you simply want to save some money because you're newly breaking into the business, SK400 will be a be better choice for you. So it depends on your uh, situation, right? If I might just add, this is exactly a, yep. a very good point. Um, if you've got a little bit more money, please invest in a battery powered light. That changed my life completely. Not only the light itself is very light, but then I can move it everywhere without any hazard points. And it's so comfortable with the families being in the studio. Seriously, it changed my life. Yeah, it's a way easier to pack up too. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. That one is in a hurry, but have to click the best picture. Watch. <laughs> Sorry, what? Let's assume that one is in a hurry, but have to click the best picture. What should she do to get the best shot? Not to be I, in a I, hurry. <laughs> I think it's more, sounds more like you have the gun in 60 seconds. What would you do? I'm just not that type of photographer. I always take my time <laughs> to be able to shoot yeah. the best. Exactly. I, it's the personality, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like I would never rush. Never rush. If mm. anyone would tell me, like, I don't have any more, I don't have much time. Can you just shoot something for me? I will say, I'm sorry. I need to have preparation done. I need to know what I'm shooting for. This is just who I am. And if you require someone else, you know, to do it, then it's absolutely fine. I am never in a hurry during my shoots. <laughs> I choose images on my own. Um, I am responsible for the selection because I truly believe um, I am the creator and I should be able to present the images from the very beginning to the very end by myself. 
Um, I guided them during the session to post them and I kind of know how they look their best. If there is a bigger selection of the images that are just amazing and it's more than I originally wanted, then I might show them that, okay, like if I've got amazing kid and he's got five beautiful images that, and I cannot choose it even myself, then I'm going to... I'm going to show it to the clients. I'm going to say, okay, which one would you like? Because I cannot physically choose myself. So yes, but if I know which one and I've got enough images, everything is just done by me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, use the, I use the natural light as my second light, uh, but not really as my main anymore. I used to do quite a lot of images just with uh, the natural window light, uh, but it's mainly for one child, and I don't really shoot one child anymore. It's more families, four, five, six, or more people, and it's impossible really to light them in my studio with window light. Okay, so I prefer studio lighting for the families, but I still teach how to use the natural light um, if I've got the students who cannot afford any lighting and I've got only window in their home or, or the studio. So yes, I do teach that. I know how to use it. It's just, I, I decide not to use it anymore. As a second light, yes. I don't use continuous light at all. To be honest, I've never used it. I use only flash. Do not ask me why. Probably it's because I just... I am familiar with it and I just don't want to change it. I am, I don't like any changes. I'm like, when I'm comfortable with something, I'm going to stick to it. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have to agree with this guy. <laughs> thank you. This is very inspirational. It is so refreshing to hear honest, precise answers from a skilled photographer. Oh, thank you so much. Many thanks to God for hosting. Thank you. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. you made I love my your day. You made my day today. Thank you so much for all these amazing comments. Thank you. Yeah, there are lots of people. Uh, they all love your work. And, Thank you. Know, you. Lots of positive comments. Thank you, Arius, as well. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yep. Perfect. How to get how to get the perfect skin tone with Godox? I don't think um, you can get the perfect skin tone with Godox. Yeah. Um. My. I think. Uh, Basically, what I can suggest you, there is a, um, a white balance mode, which uh, control the uh, you know white balance vibration in between every single flash you do, which will help uh, better control your skin tone. Though you need to give up the HSS, because with HSS, um, the white balance will vary a bit more. Um, so for commercial products, photographer, I find quite so, quite every so often, they're going to use the uh, color balance mode. Uh, with with uh, with skin tone, I think Paulina has made a made a uh, very detailed talk during the this talk. I would advise you to go back and check uh, her talk regarding the skin tone. I'm sure you will get something out of it. Um, I use umbrellas, mm. so these are definitely my favorite. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's so easy, and you know, to um, just put on and put back, and you know, yeah, yeah, umbrellas are definitely my best choice. Yeah, so she's using UB dash one sixty five W, which is one sixty five centimeters white interior umbrella, and you can put a diffusion layer on there too. I think sometimes she does that too. So uh, check it out or Google it up. Oh, they are uh, provided by my um, lab um, in UK. So I do uh, cooperate with one lab and they send me a selection of different frames. Obviously, I choose the one that complement my style. And then when clients are uh, ready to make the order for the frames, they choose which one they want for their wall arts. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we don't have any ideas. So, but stay tuned, who knows? <laughs> oh, okay. 
okay that's interesting one how do you evolve your style how do you incorporate new trends into your style to keep it fresh right so for example um i do change my style a little bit over the last couple of years and it, to be honest it's it's normal we do evolve and we do change as a people as well you, we do like different styles and you know it, it is visible in our in our creation as well how to incorporate something new for example like i've mentioned that i build myself a little flower arc arch arch not arc arch that i made myself uh, the idea came to me during the lockdown and i really wanted to do something like that for a long time but i just didn't have a time so i know that people now are crazy about boho style and flowers were always a big part of my photography if you can see from the very beginning i used to photograph children with flowers and all of that especially with the dry flowers so it's not very new in my style but it changed it evolved it's not like now they hold in one flower they've got now a flower arch around them okay so i decided to create a boho fine art style session that I haven't seen um, anywhere else. This is fresh, and to be honest, I sold out in 24 hours with all of those sessions. So you can bring something that is completely unique within your style and still make it, you know, like it belongs together. Yeah. You just need to have an open mind and a little, little bit of creativity. How do you how to find our niche? <sighs> that is. <laughs> That is a very difficult question. And I think it comes with, you need to be persistent with searching, okay? You need to, you cannot give up looking for it. That you need to constantly be photographing and trying new things. Don't close yourself. And if the photography is the thing that you want to pursue for the rest of your life, and if you're going to be experimenting within it, you will be able to find your niche, I'm sure. Isn't it umbrella a parabolic reflector? Do you occasionally use the beauty dish? Yeah, we use, yeah, the umbrella is the parabolic the umbrella. Reflector. Yes. I, I don't yeah, use reflector. Beauty, dish, beauty dish because yeah. beauty dish is hush, light. Yeah. And I do not use a hash light in my photography. I use the soft light. So yes, uh, the parabolic reflector umbrella I use all the time. Uh, depends. That's already being addressed, right, in the talk. Yes. One third rule. One third yes. rule. So just go back and rewatch it. it. You can replay it. Absolutely. Do you use grid? No. Hmm. No, I don't use any grid. Okay. Uh, yes, it's because it's a very big modifier and a very soft light. Then it's absolutely no way you're gonna have these highlights on the subject. Uh, it might sometimes happen in a very very dark skin, but then just be careful and you know uh, just adjust your um, aperture, for example, or you know just checking your camera what you're doing. But um, I don't I don't have anything like that. Okay. So basically, when you have a bigger, uh, bigger light source, you can avoid those harsh highlights or deepen shadows. Uh, all those things can be easily resolved. And my sorry, we were uh, we forgot to answer you the question about hair lights and background lights. I think uh, Paulina has already addressed. She's one light only with her, mostly with her work. So please go back and rewatch the tutorial and uh, rewatch this live session. Uh, it, you 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 will see what I'm talking about. If you guys need some further information, you can always follow her Instagram. There's lots of BTS with light set up there. It's mostly I've checked recently. It's only one light. So, yeah, yeah. My mantra. <laughs> I your guru. <laughs> my oh, is that what it is? My guru. Uh, you're like who are your best photographers? Who's your you know your idol? I think that's. Um, that might be the question. You know what? That's gonna sound really strange, but I do not follow other photographers really. Mm. Um, mm. Okay, let's see. Uh, if even if I'm gonna, even if I love uh, other photographer, it's completely different style. 
to, for example, to what I do. Um, I absolutely adore Lola Melanie. Uh, she's mm. incredible fashion maternity photographer from um, at the moment from Flor Florida, Miami. Um, mm. I do love our, uh, I mean, uh, bless him, uh, Peter Lindbergh, um, who was, I think, a very great inspiration for me um, at some time, at some point of my um, development, because um, there was a time in my life when as a photographer, when I shot myself uh, from the color photography and I was only creating the black and white images for six months. Um, and I think him, him being a black and white photographer helped me a lot. So yes, I, I do love his work a lot. Uh, I, I, I love, um, oh my God. You know what? I know. I know I can tell you. If you're going to go to my Instagram and you're going to go into following, you can see who I follow and then you can see the photographers I love. Yeah, I think um, my there is a famous Japanese photographer called Ninagawa Mika. So she's uh, she's been years of Vogue, uh, you know, cover shot photographer. I think she's uh, she had this famous talk. Uh, you know, a sentence that she never follow other photographers' work because she afraid that might affect her unique artistic uh, creativity. Doesn't make sense. We all influence each other, and sometimes, the, you know, the photo, the photographer next door at least will probably just don't follow the photographer next door to start with. I think that's Polina's trying to say. Yeah, and uh, it's almost like the, the chat I had with Polina. It's almost like a self discovery journey. The way she style, the way she pose, um, you know, the calm, the look. It's her personality, and um, I think before we, you know, we should at uh, starting of our career, we should always follow other people to learn the techniques such as dodge and burning. But with the art, arts, we create as one piece. It's all about you and yourself, isn't that? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I think um, that's almost like a spiritual question, but yeah, sure. <laughs> it was just a little bit. Yeah, I felt like enlightened. Um, what's yeah. my motivation to move on as a photographer? That is a very important question and a very difficult one because you know what? There, there were there were many moments in my journey when I was so close to quit. And I think it's it's the thing you've got inside, like a motor inside of you, that you know this is the only thing you want to do to the rest of your life. Once you're going to find your why, the thing that moves you, you're just going to stuck to it. There is nothing that can stop you. And this is only when you find your ultimate path you want to follow in your life. If you if you think you found it, but then there is any reason that something were able to stop you from doing it, that means it wasn't that. Only when you find this ultimate thing, whatever happens in your life, that will not going to be able to break you or stop you from moving forward. And I think, yeah, that, that was it. Many times I wanted to quit, but I just couldn't because I knew this is my passion and my life. Photography, and uh, that's going to sound really harsh, but photography is on the same level as with my family because it all flows together. I cannot be with my family if I am not pursuing my photography and I cannot be a good photographer without having my family next to me. It just complements each other. All right, really quick. Uh, if you, is there any way making the light as soft as softbox? Get a softbox. <laughs> how, like, look, you know, the softness of light depends on how big the light source is. If you want a, you know, a larger soft light source, you will get a soft light. AKR one will diffuse the lights evenly. Even so, it's still a small light source. If you want a softbox look, get a softbox. If you want umbrella look, get an umbrella. You can combine V1 with an umbrella or softbox. I just wouldn't use it to combat the sun or things like those. But it does work. It does work. I think a final question. If you could go back a few years, what would it? Wow. <laughs> Again, very spiritual. 
Um, yeah, I feel like I'm more, almost like in my meditation session, like talk yeah. to my girl. You know what? I think I would just don't listen to ev don't listen to everyone that trying to give mm -hmm. you the best advice. Try to check who those people are, what they achieved, and then make a decision if it's worth listening to them or not. Because there is a very, yeah. there is a lot of very clever people around, okay? That they 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 just gonna throw all the good advices on you that actually can break you. So make sure that you're gonna do a research before actually following those advices, because that can really speed up your process and you know help you to become better photographer if you're gonna choose correctly to who you follow who you listen and who you take advice from i think most of uh, the successful um you know big names i heard in the industry um they were trying to do things that nobody has done before that's the beauty of being an individual creative uh, artist you can never be better than polina being polina you can never be better than uh, look made look edmondson being look edmondson if that makes any sense so this this whole talk go back to the you know starting points your 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 photo is about who you are and yeah. uh, stick with your gun right? stick with your gun and work with consistency like polina has mentioned and if i think that's the last question if i can just add a little a little sure. thing uh, I remember once um, um, a photographer told me, a different photographer told me that to be able to help yourself in what you could create uniquely in your photography is to go back to your childhood, your roots, and you might be able to find something that was there to be able to get you in your photography further. Like my childhood is exactly what, what I, you know, produce. It's all of those antiques and the dark uh, mood images and the big frames and the flowers and the dark wood floor because that's how I was raised by my parents. That was the surroundings I was raised. So that, that kind of built me in that way. So maybe just go back to your roots and you will be able to find something that you didn't even know was there to help you. That was a great advice. Give me goosebumps. Ah. And I think though you know the talk might um, you had just now gave me goosebumps because uh, you know now I look back at my work I find lots of my work it's a self healing it's almost like a self healing to tell the people you love them that you never had a chance to so thank you Ponima uh, I, I love your work and now I love you your person and you're a great educator thank and you. I can't wait for our next talk thank and now you. stay safe. Thank you, and you and, too. Uh, you guys can follow Polina's work through her Instagram and see lots of BTS there. So with a lighting and a bit, you know, styling and everything. So follow her Instagram. For now, stay safe. I will see you guys until next time. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.